Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today, and it's Zach Ullman. Zach Ullman is doing a podcast series with us today. He has his own podcast on The Advisor, and he has some great ideas. He is a great entrepreneur, and he specializes in real estate and business, and he's here today to share some more information. His first podcast was about having it all, how to have it all. And today we're going to talk a little about how to remove yourself from your business and to live your adventures out the way you see fit. And before we go on with this, I just want to give a quick shout out to dmaworld.com. They are a marketing consulting agency that helps small businesses grow into big businesses. They don't want you to spend a fortune on marketing. So visit Mark. He is the CEO of the company at dmaworld.com. And he gladly would love to help you and help you grow into that business you always dreamt of becoming. So Zach, it's so great to have you here. I'm so happy to have you back on the show. Uh, why don't you know, for people who didn't hear the first episode, tell them a little about yourself and what you do. And then I'd love to go dive into this and talk about how to actually remove yourself from your business so we could live that adventurous life that we've always dreamt of li living, but we just don't know how to actually remove ourselves from our business and from the life that we created for ourselves. Absolutely, Stacey. So first off, thanks for having me back. It's an absolute pleasure. I just love our conversations. And so to introduce myself, you know, I grew up in a small town in Couts, Indiana, about 3,500 people where everybody knew everybody. And, you know, I, I, I wanted to explore the world. I wanted to, there was three things I really focused on traveling, helping people and making money. And I just, I couldn't see how to do that. And, you know, I, I started reading books and I ran into this concept called investing, mm -hmm. buying businesses, and I saw them making tons of money living that lifestyle that I wanted. And I said, how do I do that? You know, 20 plus years later, I think I, you know, I'm starting to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I, you know, I went to college, I got a degree in finance and business administration from Indiana university. And I graduated in 2008, which if you guys remember 2008, it was a, it was a tough time in the markets, bank failures, really big economic turbulence. And I sent out 3,500 resumes over about two years to get my dream job. And eventually started working for one of the best companies in the world as an, uh, as a valuation consultant. So I would, I learned how to value anything from, uh, public companies to private companies, to human capital, to software. And that's a lot of the skill set that I use today was gained in that job. And then I quit that and became a real estate entrepreneur and built a community of a thousand plus people, and then leveraged that into funding my own businesses. And so what we focus on today is we run a private equity firm, my wife and I, where we uh, focus on starting scaling and selling businesses and then reinvesting that money back into real estate. And then obviously one of my goals was to travel. So we've spent the last three years on the road, full-time, 20 plus countries. I'm actually coming live from Medellin, Colombia right now. And so I really just spent my time learning how to remove myself from the day-to-day, -day, remove myself from the brick and mortar businesses. Yeah. And just making making a lifestyle around my businesses that my businesses can actually pay for my lifestyle. So that's what we really focus on today. I think that's amazing. I think, you know, in this society, um, especially a lot of entrepreneurs have a very hard time, especially after COVID, a lot of businesses crashed and a lot of businesses today are struggling. You know, you find like we were talking earlier, you could have a really good month and then the next month is slow. And then you kind of balance out your, fa your finances and, you know, and people struggle, you know, it's, it's not easy being an entrepreneur and it's also very time consuming. You know, people don't realize and they think it's, oh, it's great to have your own business. But, you know, um, you know, I think it was someone I was talking to, they said, oh, what, how many, how many, um, I'd love to have my own business. And he goes, well, how many hours do you think you need to work in your own business? He's like, oh, like eight hours, you know, or, you know, and I probably, if it's my own business, I could probably make it like four. And he's like, well, I, I work, you know, pretty much, you know, a minimum of 12 hours to, you know, however long it takes. And he says, I'm always working. 
you know, so people don't realize that entrepreneurs, like successful entrepreneurs, and even people who are struggling, they invest all their time and energy into their business. It becomes their baby. And, you know, they have ups and downs. You never know what's going to happen when it's your own business. You know, problems evolve. It's not, it's it's your responsibility. It's not the company's responsibility. So a lot gets put on your shoulders. And for some people, it can be very, very overwhelming. So, you know, you talk about how to remove yourself from your business. How do you get to that point how do you get to the point where you're in a business and you know it's it's a lot of work you're you're stressed it's hard to you know that work-life balance is all over the place because you're trying to balance work and, and your your home life but it's virtually like impossible you know it's um you know you have to get to that point in life where you could actually have that work-life balance so what do you do how do you remove yourself from your business how do you get to that successful point where you you learn how to remove yourself from the business and be able to be successful and not have all that stress on your shoulders yeah and so i mean that's that's what you know that's the uh the golden the golden question and where everybody wants to be yeah and here's what i've learned is you can't, you know, some people may disagree with this, but this is my, I, so I'm talking from my experiences. I can't do what I don't know how to do. And, right. and what I mean by that is if you've never done this, it's, it's, I could sit here and tell you everything all day long, but until you actually go out there and swing the bat and understand your, it, it, the, the lessons are in the work. Yeah. And so my goal is to shine as much light on what I can, so I can point you in the right direction and at the end of the day, everyone's going to be a little bit unique, but the frameworks are the same. That's why I love, I'm really big on frameworks. And so the first question is, is understanding what type of business you're in, yeah. right? Are you, the, the first question is, are you the business? Right. And so if you're, you know, if you're um, a, a doctor or an accountant or a, uh, a special trades person, probably you're the business. Yeah. Uh, and so, so that's going to have a little bit different avenue than, you know, if you're in the business of, you know, e-commerce or in the business of something like that, because there's a lot of e-commerce people out there. I, you know, I, I bought a couple uh, stores and businesses like that. The challenge with those are everybody can do it and you're competing against people with, I mean, they, they, they spend tons of money. And yeah. so I'm not real big on that. I'm really big. What I love is service-based businesses. Yeah. Uh, specifically around what I'm, what I love and what I'm good at. And so my background is finance. Uh, and so I said, okay, how do, how do I take what I'm really good at and create a business around it? Yeah. And me being, you know, in that business, me being the business, you know, 20 plus years experience education and, and coaching, I had to go, okay, how can I replicate myself? And so the first thing is identifying that. And then, you know, if, if you're brand new to this world in, in of business, the easiest way to, to, uh, to make this concept of residual income and travel and adventure or whatever it is that you want yeah, is by learning how to sell somebody else's stuff. Right. And that's how I got into it. Because I didn't know how to do the fulfillment side of things. I didn't yeah. know how to do the other components of a business, the hiring, the HR, you know, all of that stuff. Yeah. I knew finance and I thought finance was going to make me a lot of money. It just so happens that uh, you also have to learn how to sell. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I became a master at sales and marketing. And then I sold somebody else's stuff. And that gave me the freedom to learn that craft. And yeah. so all I focused on was sales and marketing, sales and marketing, sales and marketing. And then I became really good at sales and marketing. And my next problem was, oh my gosh, we had a great month. I was telling you this in the green room. It was like, I had a 50, $60,000 month. And then I had to spend the next two to three months servicing those people. And so I had nothing coming in. I said, okay, I have to replicate this. I need a framework. Yeah. And so if you're listening to this, understand your business and understand, are you the business? Uh, Cause there's plenty of things you can sell out there where you don't, I, 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 I chose to sell, uh, sell consulting, coaching and consulting of somebody yeah. else's. And so I was still really required to be in that, but there's plenty of things you can sell out there that you don't have to be in the, you know, after the, the, the fulfillment side of it. Yeah. There's th right. But it, but you gotta become a pro at sales and marketing, regardless of whatever you're in. 
Right. Because if, if the phone isn't ringing, you're not going to be in business. Exactly. And so that's like the framework of that. And so once you gain that skill set, uh, and, and this is what I tell people, I say, you know, it's easier to make a hundred thousand dollars working for somebody else than it is to work for yourself, but it's yeah. easier to make a million dollars working for yourself than somebody else. And so don't, don't diss a job. Don't right. Because that's, that's the opportunity to get trained and developed by somebody else. And so yeah. use a job. If you're, if you're in a job right now, use that job to, to gain your skill sets. And then once you start stair stepping into, you know, doing this concept of business full time, there's going to be some key components you want to focus on. Yeah. And the first one is finance. And this is where I see everybody mess up right. is they want to get so hot and heavy on sales and marketing that they don't, they, they don't know their numbers. They don't, I, I, I just got one of my clients, they do $5 million a, a, a year and their finances are a wreck. They're mm-hmm. running you know, paycheck to paycheck, cash thin. They make yeah. great money. They just spend it on their livelihood, right? Uh, gotcha. Right. They spend mm-hmm. it on their livelihood. The business produces. Yes. Right. And so, uh, and and you know, their their current team isn't the best, right? They're not keeping their financials up to date, and so they don't have the wisdom and the foresight to understand even where they're at. Yeah. And so the first thing we do is we focus on your finances. Where are you? What's your churn or what's your cash balances? You know, I always like to tell people have a year's worth of cash in the bank because if it could go wrong, it will. And you don't want to be stressed out. You don't want to have to. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I've learned that for myself. I've ran out of money before and it absolutely, it's a horrific feeling. Yeah. And I had to go, do I pay my office bills or do I pay my personal bills? Right. And it, it just, there's, there's nothing like that feeling there. And so, you know, what we did is we got cash, cash in the bank uh, to mm-hmm. help weather those storms. And so that's the first part of it. Right. Um, anything you want to share on that? You know, I, I, I agree totally. Like I, I've dealt with so many people in business that go through the same thing. They focus so much on their making money and the numbers that they're bringing in and how many clients that are coming through the door and they're not paying attention to the expenditures and they're spending more than they really should. And I've, right. I, I've met many people, many successful people that got to the point in their businesses where they they didn't know, should I pay my, my, my personal bills or should I pay my, um, should I pay my, my business bills? And then they found, they found themselves getting taking loans out because they couldn't, they didn't have enough of money. And, you know, the crazy thing was, is that they had, they had people coming through the door, they had money coming through and it was because their finances weren't organized. And it's so easy to do too, because it's like, you know, you get caught up in one thing and you just neglect other things in your business because there's so many different components. And I think you people have to realize how to prioritize and how to regroup things so they don't get lost in that. And they realize how much they're actually spending, how much they really need to keep in the bank when the bills are coming out personally and and business wise and make sure that they have enough money and coverage. And then I think also you need to actually think about, okay, I want to profit. I don't want to just live, you know, peanut butter and jelly every week and just make, make ends meet. You know, I, I want to be able to have money in the bank that I could spend and enjoy and your philosophy, live those adventures, you know? Right. So it's like, you know, how do you prioritize? How do we re- regroup things so we're well organized as a business person and that we were able to have enough money to pay our home bills, our business bills, and we're actually, you know, we know what we're spending and we can actually put things to a halt because we're more organized and situated. I think that's where people get, they just, they have their mind. It's like ADD business, you know, they have their minds going in so many different places that they don't realize they're making mistakes and until the actual bomb kind of falls down and then it's like what happened you know yeah i mean i i I fell in that trap of credit cards credit cards credit cards credit cards let's produce credit cards produce 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 pay the credit cards right hopefully pay the credit cards off (laughs) yeah (laughs) i mean it's it's tough and so i i think the reality is is most people don't know what to do and so they're you know they they go out there and they go to youtube and they and, and they go to what I did is I, I, I was just going 
out there trying to learn, you know, I, I'm a finance guy by trade. And so I understood yeah. finance better than most people. And the challenge was, well, I, I need to be producing, right. To make money for payroll, to make money. Cause I quit my job and all this stuff. Yeah. And so my effort went to sales and marketing and I got laxed on the financial aspect of it uh, or, you know, managing the finances. Yeah. And then I would, so I brought on people and then, you know, I brought on very well-known bookkeeping and CPA firms and they, they messed up. And yeah. so it was, it, you know, the, the accounting aspect of what we do, the accounting industry, one of the uh, companies that I worked with five years ago, I mean, they just, they just went out of business and they are a national company. Yeah. And, you know, they said the accounting industry, 300,000 people uh, deficit of, of they, they need people. And so what I did is I just created my own team. Right. And, and I said, okay, if, you know, and, and, and for you listeners out there, this is a huge principle that I take. There's, I think there's two in, uh, principles that you can take to be successful. The first one is personal responsibility. Yeah. Cause it's so easy to blame everyone else. So easy oh, to blame, yeah. you know, my CPA, they mess this up and my bookkeeper mess up. Yeah. That's not going to get me anywhere. So I, I really focus on personal responsibility and then the other one is intention. What are you doing? Where are you going? What, you know, all of those things. And so I said, I'm going to start my own bookkeeping firm so I can do that. And so we have our own accounting firm. We have, you know, we're just getting ready to do, I do tax consulting, right? Uh, right. but I, I'm going to have, we're hiring CPAs and I'm just, cause it's too costly of a thing to, to take your eye off the, the prize. And so it, when you're, when you're stair stepping into this, it is going to pay you dividends to take book uh, to understand finances. Now that right. doesn't mean you have to learn to be a pro at QuickBooks. I don't know QuickBooks. I pay somebody to do that. Yeah. But financial theory, financial concepts, I'm a, I'm a pro at it and finance is different than accounting. Yeah. And so, you know, really start off strong, understanding financial principles, income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow. Mm -hmm. understanding how to interpret, interpret those. And there's, a, there's books out there, there's trainings, there's podcasts out there. And you don't, again, have to know the nitty gritty of it. You just need to be able to interpret yeah. what your bookkeeper creates. And so if you do that, you're going to be, you're going to know way ahead when things are going south. And so that yeah. way you're not going to get stuck in the debt. You're not going to get stuck. You can go, Oh, I can see all my financial statements that we're, we're here. Uh, we need to hire somebody new, or we need to increase sales, or we need to do X. the The financial statements are going to tell you everything you need, and so that's why that's uh, in 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 our process of starting scaling and selling businesses. We focus on finances first, then we move to operations, then we move to marketing. Uh, I'm I'm rephrase that. Then we move to sales, and the last one we do is marketing. Yeah, because marketing is the proverbial spigot that when we can open it up as fast and as wide as we want. And if the rest of the downstream isn't ready to handle that, yeah, it, you know, you can bring in clients. They're, they're not happy. Then they go write a bad review about you and the whole thing just blows up. Right. And then we have our finances in order in order to understand how quick can we open up that spigot? Because right. if we open it up too soon, we're going to take on too much, but if we don't open it up enough, we're going to run out of money. And so it's this delicate balance, but it all starts with the finance. And so what I like to see people do is understand financial, pr financial principles, get a good bookkeeper, right. That yeah. understands your business and then have daily and not daily, um, but weekly and monthly updates. We yeah. use, uh, all of our quick, uh, QuickBooks is online. So I can view it every day. Right. Right. Where are we at? What are we doing? What's the receivables? What's the payables? What's my cash balances? You know, these type of things. And yeah. once you understand your business, you're going to understand the things that you need to look at, but then you, you literally document the process that that takes. And, you know, we talk about SOPs and uh, standard operating practices, protocols. Uh, we talk about systems processes. Yeah. We, these are big words that are thrown around in the, in the art of scaling a business, but very few people know what that means. I've right. taken classes and, you know, they, they talk about it in theory, but until you get out there. And so we use a very specific protocol on how to create SOPs with the idea that you can bring in somebody and they can figure it out without you. And that's the, that's where it first starts. Right. And so removing yeah. yourself from the accounting aspect, removing yourself from the bookkeeping, removing yourself 
from the uh, the financial piece of it, yeah. then we can focus on operations and servicing those people that we sell. Right. No, for sure. I, I think I think that's very important because I think a lot of times people tend to try to do everything themselves, you oh, know, totally. and when they do that, it's it's virtually impossible. You, there's too many hours. There's not enough hours in the day and it's too stressful and you're right. not going to be, you know, if you can't really focus on the important things of your business, you can't spread yourself out. If you're going to be successful, I think you really need to focus on the important stuff and then get people to help you on all the other stuff around you in order right. to, to reach that success. How do you feel about that? Yeah. And so I think, I think people are afraid to spend money mm -hmm. in business. To, I know, you know, just sharing my personal experience, you're like afraid, but you're also willing at the same yeah. time. The question is, is like, well, am I making the right decision? Right. Right. When exactly. I go buy this 10, 20, $30,000 program, is this the right thing? Right. And there's so many people out there selling stuff. I know we talked about this last time. Yeah. You know, they, they don't know. They just put a course together because they're trying to, you know, make a living. Yeah. Um, but it's that the experience, nothing replaces the experience. And so the, the, the key thing is, is, and this was really hard for me to, um, understand specifically if you're bootstrapping a business. Now there's, yeah. there's different ways to start businesses. You can buy uh, additional businesses or I'm sorry, uh, operating businesses. So it, you know, I'm specifically talking to the people that are working in the business Yeah, is you have to get enough money in the bank to be able to weather the storm. And so you're going to be, you're going to be in pure sales mode. Right. Selling, servicing, selling, servicing, selling, servicing, got some money in the bank. I understand what's needed. I'm going to document this, this piece of this process. And then I'm going to go hire somebody because I can afford it. Right. I got money right. in the bank. And so what you're going to probably offload first, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm talking about the solo entrepreneur, the person that yes. is really good at making money and they don't have a, any teams yet. Right. And so the first person, a thing you're probably going to, uh, that we chose to do is like an assistant, an administrative assistant. They're going to deal with, you know, the emails they are going to deal with the, uh, you know, just a day to day of running a business. Yeah. But you're going to need to document all of those things that they need to do. What, you know, what do they, how do they respond to emails? What's the, what's the, uh, booking? How do they book appointments for you? You know, how do they, uh, uh pay your bills, whatever it is that you need to offload that. Yeah. That's uh, the first position. And then the second position we like bringing on is somebody that can book appointments for you. And so that's going to be depending on if you have ads or depending on what type of social media marketing you do, depending on your lead generation uh, strategy is you're going to want somebody to book qualified leads for you. Yeah. And so that time that you actually have on the call that you spend prospecting mm -hmm. is with qualified clients. And so we're going to remove that, that piece of it. And so that you're actually on the call only selling right now, right? right? So you're, you're focused on, you got somebody in your administrative uh, team taking care of the office, uh, maybe online office, brick and mortar office, wherever it is. Yeah. Uh, and then you have somebody else booking you qualified appointments. And so now what your time is doing, your time is uh, spent on selling and servicing, Yeah. Right? selling and servicing. And then the next component now, depending on what type of business you have is I like to replace the sales team, mm -hmm. right? Is okay because now I can get out of that sales aspect. Uh, again, you might not be able to do that as quick if it's more of a specialized thing, right? Uh, but uh, maybe, or or maybe you maybe on the other end of it, you replace the servicer, and so maybe you know if you're doing online stuff or you know even brick and mortar, maybe you hire someone that just uh, that that makes the proverbial donuts. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're not no longer the donut maker. Right. And so that, that way now all you're focusing on is either sales or servicing. Right. Right. Sales or servicing. And in the background, what you're doing is you're creating the operational component of this. Yeah. Right. You're saying, okay, what, what does the, what does my operations, the, the person I'm going to bring on, what do they need to focus on? What is their, what is their instruction manual on how to do that job? Right. right. And so you're, you're creating those SOPs and you're creating those tasks and you're, uh, you know, we use, we use software that does that. And it, it reminds everybody 
what to do and when to do it and even how to do it. And so you're building that backbone of your business uh, with the systems and the process and the structures. And then the last component is, you know, we remove, uh, remove yourself from either the operation or the sales. And mm -hmm. so now we've stepped into that CEO role. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, I, I have the office running. I have lead generation focus. I have uh, either, you know, operation and sales, mm -hmm. that component of it. And I already have my finances because that was step one. And so it's like, oh my gosh, now you get to take a breath and just look at what you've created. Right. right? You're like, okay, I, I've, I made it to CEO position. And I got plenty of cash in the bank because we focus on our finances. Now we're ready to go. Now we're really ready to scale. And you have to look at, you know, you, you don't want to scale too fast. And so this, again, it's, it's a dance. Mm -hmm. It's a dance and it's going to be, it's going to be unique for all of you guys out there. But that framework I just went over is the same yeah. finances, get your finances in order get your operations on point so it can handle sales and you can, uh, the sales that you're going to make. And as you hire new people, guess what? You're going to need a hiring protocol. How do you yeah. hire people? What's the onboarding process? All of right. that stuff of operations. How do you deliver? How do you mail the packages? <laughs> like all of this stuff that's just so intuitive yeah. for us, you need an SOP. And then the cool thing about that, the better you become at the documentation of SOPs and systems and processes is the cheaper you're going to be able to hire somebody to do it. Right. Because if you have a very specific detailed instructions on how to do the thing, on how to do the deliverable or whatever yeah, it is, right. you don't need somebody that can think critically, right? right? as critically because critical thinkers require a lot more compensation. Yes. And so it's just like, follow the process. What does the process say to do? Right. And so that is going to help you save money. Right. And, yes. and, and, and so that's how I, I really built that component of it. I just said, all right, really black and white, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And, and if you have any troubles, here's where, you know, call me. And then when they have that trouble, I go update the SOP. Right. Right. And so it's, it's, it's just doing that over and over and over again until you have an instruction manual on your business. Yeah. And once you have that, oh my gosh, it's such a liberating experience because your team won't need you. Yeah. Right. Right now, my team, the only reason my team needs me is for direction on where to go. Like, right. where are we pointing this ship? Mm -hmm. And uh, making sure I'm out there, you know, make sure that uh, the money's uh, being spent on ads to to bring everyone in there. Right. And then I get to focus on fun stuff like this on having podcasts and, and, but I will still tell you my number one focus is driving sales as a CEO, yeah. it's driving sales. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm making sure all those other components are working, but if the sales aren't there, right. It, it's, it's not, it's not a business. Yeah. So I know that was a lot, but no, it was great. And, you know, you re really went through everything in, in orderly detail. You know, I think people really need to understand that, you know, they really have to be organized. They have to really be, you know, detailed and, and, and break it down. And it, it takes time, you know, it, and it might be a, when a person listens to it, it might be a lot, but if they break it down and they work on one part, you know, and, and they, and once they finish that one part that they get to the next part and the next part and they, and they start organizing and writing it out and, and, you know, and really, you know, making it, you know, having their team, their business understand each and then every, every area, especially the area, you know, and you only have to work like for finance, you just have to teach the finance people, the finance stuff or the sales people, you just teach the sales people, the sales stuff, and you have everything organized and detailed. And once they know what they're doing, they're not going to have to be confused and have to do that critical thinking. Like you said, they're going to have everything right in front of them. And they just boom, 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 boom. And, you know, and it makes a business run more efficiently and it flows much better. I get what you're saying. Right. Yeah. And then they cut you. What's so great about it is you come in and, you know, I open up my software and it tells me exactly my software tells me what I need to focus on today. Yeah. Because the way I've set up the SOPs is, is, you know, my team member uh, said, you know, we use a like project management software. Right. And so it says, Hey, here's your notifications for today. I just clear my notifications 
And then I get to go focus on whatever I need to focus on. My team is right. taken care of and you know, they may have, they may need approval for something. They may, whatever it is, they may need some coaching direction, but it's in there and it's, it's, they assigned a task to me. I come in and I get them what they need so they can, you know, be rock stars or whatever it is they're doing. Yeah. And then I get to go focus on, okay, what, what can, what do I need to focus on today? Is it, is it a podcast? Is it, you know, reviewing the finances? Is it buying a new business? Is it, you know, maybe sometimes, oh my gosh, maybe I got to let somebody go or, or right. go, go give some constructive uh, feedback, or maybe I got to meet with a client that I haven't met in a while. But uh, when my team comes in, they, they know exactly what it is they need to do because the soft, the, the, the processes tell them that. Yeah. And so that's, and then again, it's such a relief when you go, oh, I got everything done. Right. Right. I get everything done. Cause in this world, I mean, you can fill your time. And the question is, is that the right thing to do? And yeah. so let the system create a system that tells you what to do. Right. And I, and the I, other, I, go, oh, ahead, go ahead, Stacey. No, 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 finish, finish, please. The other thing I, I, I really want to stress on this is time of implementation. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you hear this and we, a lot of us, myself included, I want it now. Get ready to spend the next three to five years of your life doing this. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, depending on where you're at, depending on what your skill set is. I mean, I, I can ramp up a business pretty quickly because I've been through it. Yeah. If you're new to it, you, you don't have those skill sets. You don't have those teams. You don't have that understanding. And right. so it's, I mean, it's taken me, I, I tell people, it's taken me my whole life to get here. <laughs> yeah. But from when I really focus on the intention of it, I've spent, golly, I probably spent eight to 10 years on this. Right. And so, you know, because I was, I was doing it and then learning it and then doing it some more and learning it and doing it and learning it and doing it. And then I'd hire people, right. I brought in my first person. It, it was an administrative assistant VA. Right. And then it was exactly like I laid that framework out. It was the, uh, the front end, uh, appointment setters. Right. And then it was, you know, for me, it was a sales team. And I, uh, the, for me, operations was my last thing. Right. Uh, just because I, I, uh, the way I set it up to remove myself from, and then I just focused on the business and I, I got to see it from like above as opposed to being in it. Yeah. And and how relieving is that, you know, that takes off such a brick. And I, I, you know, I, one thing I liked about what you talked about, we were, when we were talking in the green room is basically you were mentioning when you have employees that aren't really doing a good job, you have to let them go. You can't, oh you God. can't hold on to these employees that aren't working to the level that you need them to work. Cause there's a lot of employees that have their hand out and they want everything, but then they, they're not doing what they're supposed to, you know, whatever you hired them for, or they come in and they're, they're doing a half-assed job or they're not following the directions that you originally gave them. And those are the people that you have to really decide, well, if you can't do A, B, and C, then you can't be part of this team because, and some people hold on to them a little too long and they don't realize that it's affecting their business. It's affecting the way the flow of the business, which can affect the dollar bill of how much they're bringing in and, and, you know, the success rate of their, of their business. Yeah. I found, you know, specifically in a a fast paced environment, like, you know, when you're first starting out is it's tough, right? You, you need, you need a scrappy person yeah. because it changes every day. I'm like, Oh, that didn't work. Let's try this. That didn't yeah. Cause you don't know. Yeah. And, and so it's like, okay, I'm going to try this strategy offer, whatever it is. It's either going to work or it's not, or we're going to adjust it. Yeah. And so, you know, it's very, I love it. Cause it's like, I don't, I don't know. We're going to figure it out. Right. But it takes a special person to be able to operate in that industry or that, that environment and then, you know, as you figure it out, it starts to stable off and, you know, become more consistent. And there's people that love the consistency. There's people that love the figure it out aspect. And so um, the, the biggest thing with team members is most of them, depending on the position, don't know the grand scheme of things. Like they don't see the overall picture. I do because it's my, it's my vision. It's my creation. It's my business. Yeah. So I, I, I know every little thing, how it should be, how I see it. Yeah. And if you're not communicating that to your team, which this was something I, you know, I'm still working on this because I'm so visual. And then I talk literally or, uh, you know, um, 
literally, I think that's the word, right? Yeah, and so yeah. the words are coming out, but they're not seeing the picture in my mind. And so I got to enroll them into the grand vision. I got to get them excited about it. Where are we going? What are we doing? And so I, I figured out if they know where we're going, yeah, they can figure out how to get there. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. They can do that critical thinking. It's like, oh, uh, you know, the instruction manual said this, but something changed in the real life. I don't know what to do. But if they know where we're going, they go, oh, I'll figure it out. I can right. get around this obstacle because I know where we're going. And so as a, a person that's leading a team, you really got to communicate that. And then, you know, let the team know what is the expectation? What's the numbers? Yeah. Again, back to the finances. How many people, how many calls should we be booking a week? Right. How many, how many uh, closes should we have a week? And if we're not hitting those numbers, why? Yeah. Why, why, why? Because I've learned most people want to do well, right? There's something very, very few people that, you know, just come in and, and looking for, um, you know, that proverbial handout, but mm-hmm. it, what it sort of, the, the default is, is if they're not getting that training and yeah. they're not getting right, it, it, it occurs like that. Right. And, it, and, and I just had to let two people go. They've been with me for six plus years. And I just kept like, I kept, you know, this is where we need to go. This is where we need to be. This is the training. I would pay for training. The challenge is, is they weren't willing to open the proverbial book up. Right. They weren't willing to go to the classes. Yeah. They were great when I started, right. They were, they were able to operate at my level, but as I became better, as I took more classes, as I, you know, uh, perfect, uh, worked on myself, they weren't working on themselves like that. Right. And so now it was like, oh, they can't keep up. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, they want more money because the business is doing better. They want more money because things cost more. Right. You know, and, and then it's like, give me more. And I'm like, well, you're not, you're not, and this is going to sound, may sound bad. I don't mean it like this. I, and I didn't say this to them, but I yeah. said, you got to become worth more. Yeah. Right? If, right. You got, and the only way to become worth more is to go learn something new, bring something more to the business. Yeah. You don't get a raise just because you've been here a certain amount of time. Right. What's, what's the incremental value you're bringing. And that's yeah. why we, we pay for the coaching. We pay for the development. It, it's up to them to take it. Right. And I I've learned if they're not willing to take it, fire them. Yeah. Right. Like let them go because we're growing and we're going fast. And what happened with those two is they just, uh, they couldn't keep up with the rest of us. Right. They just, and then they were slowing everyone else down. Yeah. And again, not like they're not like they're bad people. They just don't have the skill sets because they haven't put the time in to perfect themselves. Right. And so I, uh, that's something I really look at. And I just, uh, uh, I also use a lot of, um, people from, uh, right now, South America, I mean, I have 45 people in 11 countries, Mm -hmm. but there's, there's all my South American crew. They just love to learn. And they're just type of figure it out type of people. They, you know, I was reading this beautiful article about, um, free agency. It's Mm -hmm. like the ability to be yourself in a world that's trying to make you somebody else. Yeah. And so I like that. Yeah. And it's like, they said, you know, in, in this article, there was like, You want to find people that had challenges Mm -hmm. and then figured it out through that challenges. And so all of my South American crew, they all had challenges. Yeah. Uh, My sales team, they all grew up in Venezuela. Right. And so the social economic aspect there, and they, they, they put themselves through school and, you know, they, they, uh, one still lives in Venezuela, but the rest, you know, one in uh, Buenos Aires, one in uh, Chile, one in Lima. Uh, and so, but they had, they had to do that themselves at a very young age. So, yeah. they, and then, you know, my other, uh, my operations director, she got sent to the United States with two months worth of, uh, income, not right. speaking, not speaking English. And she, and she figured it out. Wow. And so I would much rather pick people like that yeah, to have on my team because oh, they'll, sure. they'll get to the end zone. Yeah. And then I just pay that. I pay for their education. I, 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 I help uh, facilitate that rather than somebody that has that, you know, Ivy league school that, you know, uh, grew up in a very successful family. I look for the people that had, have that grit and that determination and then I pay them very well. I pay them more than anyone else will and give them profit shares uh, based on, you know, their performance. Right. And they figure that, that, then they focus on 
the business and then yeah. I get to focus on my stuff. Right. And th- that's, that's amazing, you know, and, yeah. and it, it makes sense, you know, everything, you know, everything you've explained today makes so much sense. If you just go step by step and do the things you mentioned today, you know, you can get to that point where you can remove yourself from the business. It's definitely possible. It's feasible. You know, it's just being able to organize, prioritize and go step by step, you know, creating, you know, detailed explanations and and prioritizing, setting goals. And then communication is key. Definitely making your business understand what your goals are and where you want to be. And like you said, have those consistent you know, meetings with these people. So they know where you're at. They know what you want. And, you know, things aren't misled, you know, right. these are great, great tips. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, and it's, uh, it's, it's a dance. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's an adventure in itself. Yeah. And your biggest problem you're going to have is people. <laughs> yeah. People dealing with humanity. Cause if everyone did what they were supposed to, it'd be easy. Yeah. The challenge is, People aren't going to do what they're supposed to do. They're going to have bad days. You're going to have a bad day. Uh, you're, you know, and then dealing with yourself. Yeah. As, right. Developing yourself and, and not losing your temper and your emotions and having patience, but not having too much patience. And, you know, it's, 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 it's a dance. That's all I can say. Yeah, it definitely is a dance and, and not to give up. If you have a, a passion, an idea, you know, to, to go with it. But are there cases where you have to realize, well, you know what, maybe this business isn't the right business for me, you know, and be able to walk away from it. This is a little different than the topic we're talking about, but, you know, I was reading this article and I was talking to some people, you know, when do you know when to walk away? Like you can remove yourself from a successful business, but how do you know when you're in a business and things aren't working out? How do you know when the time to walk away is? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question because I've I've had instances like that where it's just like I'm not gonna quit, right? Because you hear all this, I'm not gonna quit, I'm not gonna give up, I'm I'm gonna make it till it till it um uh, I'm successful at it. Yeah. And so what I do is I look at the industry, mm-hmm. like we had a a business development VA staffing company. Right. When I started it six years ago, it was it was newer. Uh, no, I don't want to say newer, but it wasn't as, as, uh, like it is today. And so we were, you know, we could charge a nice price and we could get that Yeah. today. Everyone's doing it. I mean, you could pick up outsourcing teams for next to nothing. Yeah. And so the, the, the math of the business, it wasn't there. And so again, if you don't know finance right. and you don't understand that it's well, the math doesn't work. Right. And so what we did was instead of focusing on VAs, what we did is we, um, we focused on the, we said, Hey, we don't want to race to zero. Yeah. Right? And we, I said, we want to, we want to be the unique person and I want to charge a bunch of money. Right. And so we said, okay, let's just tweak it, tweak the message a little bit. And that's how we ended up with our uh, financial services business. Uh, because all of these people out there, you know, instead of hiring a VA bookkeeper or a VA aspect like that, they didn't know the, they didn't even know how to coach the bookkeeping team. They didn't know how to coach the finance team. They didn't know right. how to coach the marketing or sales team. And so we said, Hey, I will be your fractional CFO. Mm-hmm. Right. I will be your fractional COO because I know how to do this stuff. Yeah. And instead of having me uh, educate you on it, let me do it for you. And it was like, oh my God, it was, it was a beautiful, beautiful relationship because now they don't have to worry about learning it. Yeah. Right. And I'm a pro at it. And so it doesn't take me that much time. And so I'm getting, I can, I know how to create systems, processes, structures, SOPs. I come in, I get the business situated specifically around finance first. And then, uh, then I put a team in and right. then I just make sure everything's running like it's supposed to, I remove myself from that piece of it. Yeah. But I still get to charge the price that I charge. Uh, and then I go and take on the next company and then right. I go take on the next company. Next thing you know, I mean, right now we got three, uh, four, four portfolio businesses that we do that for. And I get, uh, I get equity on three of them. Right. And so because of the value that I bring, 
Now, if you don't have that wisdom experience and everything like that, you can't do that. Right. But there's something you can do. There's something you're an expert at that you can be somebody's solution for. And if you really understand how to document, do SOPs uh, and, and all that, then you can just come in, charge that higher ticket price, document it, put somebody at an hourly rate to manage the system, and then you move on to the next one. And you just created, literally created a residual income. Right. And I think that's expert. I think that's excellent because you know what? Not everybody that runs a business knows how to run a business. You know, you have like a lot of, you know, people in the medical field that have practices, you know, they're great at being a doctor, but they're not great at running a business, Mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, when you have that type of thing, you have to really have, you know, people, like you said, that come in and have different areas of responsibility and they tend to those different areas because one, you know, certain people, you know, people who are running businesses don't have enough time in the day and two, you know, they have strengths in certain areas, but you know, they don't have strength in other areas. And, you know, I've seen so many, you know, people, even cause I work in the health field and I see so many people who have businesses and they're good at health and they're good at doing what they do, but they're not good at running a business and, you know, and they try to, and, but, you know, they could be doing so much more if they had that outside source. And like you're talking about. Yeah. And that's what I, um, so when I look for clients for my, uh, so, so what I do, just to give you guys a, a understanding, I focus on finance, like finances first. So yeah. financial services, business, uh, we focus on bookkeeping, tax prep, reinvestment, money right. management type stuff. And so my clients come in and what I'm looking for is I'm looking for people I can partner with. Yeah. I'm looking for businesses I can buy. I'm looking right. for people that want to sell their business because they're stressed out. Yeah. And I say, so, so they pay me to be their finance guy. Yeah. And then I get, I get paid to do due diligence. And right. so I'm looking for great people. I'm, I'm looking for, for people that either a love what they're doing and, and are horrible at running businesses yeah. or b people that have an opportunity for me to buy the business. And what I've done with uh, three of the businesses in my portfolio is I found people that are beautiful people. They want to make a difference in the world. They're passionate about their, their thing that they're offering. Yeah. And they just want to do that. And I said, okay, hey, give me X percent of the business and pay me this much a month. And I'll, I'll take care of finance. I'll take care of your operations. I'll take care of your sales and your marketing. Obviously, the more I take care of, the more I get. Uh, but then they get to, they get to be that, that, that cheerleader out there. They get to be the one. And then I don't have to be the guy in front of the camera because I spent a lot of my time, you know, being the cheerleader, yeah. being the, the one. And I, I want to be behind the curtain. Right. I don't care if anybody knows who I am anymore yeah. because I want to go ride motorcycles. And I, want, <laughs> I want to be able to take some time off. And when you're the guy in front of the room, you know, it's sometimes you, you got to be in front of the room. Yeah. And so, but they love being in front of the room. They, yeah. lo- you know, and so, and then they get to take time off because I have the back of the room stuff taken. Care right. Of. Mm-hmm. And then I put my team in place in the back of the room. And so I just make sure everyone's doing what they're supposed to do. Everything's running, you know, like it's supposed to. Yeah. And then I can, you know, have that proverbial income and be more of a shareholder. Right. And that's what I really strive for is to be a shareholder, not a CEO. Yeah. Uh, but, but it, you know, it's, it's about people and it's, um, but it's, it's such a fun conversation. Mm-hmm. It is. You know, if, if you had to tell people, like, um, give them a couple of takeaways, what do you think uh, would be some good takeaways to, to help somebody re- remove themselves from the business and start living the, out their adventures and doing the things they really love to do? I would still get, uh, say, go get a pen and paper, a, something to draw on, something to write, and, and write out where do you want to be? Because most people are conceptual about it. And mm-hmm. so I actually have a framework for that. It's like, where are you today? How many hours do I work? How much money do I have in the bank? What's my skill set? Like just take an inventory of where you're at. Yeah. Right. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are your relationship capital? What's your knowledge base? What's your, again, financial, what's your time commitment? All of those things. Yeah. So that's the starting point. And then you go, okay, where do I want to be? What does my life look like? And in, in most people, I'm telling you five to $10,000 residual income. Yeah. Or, you know, make, let me, I don't want to say residual income, five to $10,000 with 
uh, maybe uh, time freedom or maybe yeah. geographical freedom. Right. I mean, what we need more than that in, in reality? I mean, I'm, I'm living here in South America, $10,000 a month. Oh my gosh, you could, you're, you could have anything you want. And so really putting a number in a, in a, in a destination a intention, right. And like I said, intention, Yeah. where do you want to be? And then you just, you start backtracking and you go, okay, the first question is, am I, what I doing going to get me there? Yeah. Right. Is what I'm doing going to get me there? Cause for many of us, uh, it won't, right? right. It won't. And so we have to look at, okay, is it going to get me there? And if it's, if it is cool, we know the plan, right? We sort of just right. work it back. I need $10,000 a month. Uh, okay. That means I need uh, X number of clients mm -hmm. per, uh, per month. I need, d depending on your, uh, depending on your pricing model and things like yeah. that. And you just work it backwards. Right. And, uh, and if it's not right, if it's not uh, going to get you there, the question is, is, well, how, what's the industry I can be in? What's the, uh, what's the, uh, uh, business I can be in? Am I, do I have a lot of money? Cool. Maybe I go buy some rental real estate, right? Maybe I have no money, but I have a lot of time. Great. I go educate myself on something, right? Maybe I'm a professional salesperson. I'm great at sales. Great. Go find something to sell. Right. Right. Don't create it. And so it's really that self-assessment, that self-inventory of where you're at, where do you want to go and then create a plan to get there. Yeah. And what that'll do is that'll help get rid of all of these distractions. Right. Because everyone wants to sell you something. Everyone wants you to market their stuff. Everyone yeah. wants you to be a part of their business. And if you don't know where you're going, you don't know when to say yes or no. Right. And that's, that, that's the thing I struggle with because I just, I love, I love business. And I love helping people. Mm -hmm. And I just keep cutting stuff off. I'm like, nope, not going to do that anymore. Not going to do that anymore. That meeting is no longer worth my time. It used right. to be, I used to get something from that meeting. That meeting used to be effective, but today it's not because I'm, I've grown, I'm bigger. Uh, I'm a bigger person than I was six, 12 months ago. And so we're no longer going to do that. Yeah. And that's where it is. Find somebody in your business, in your industry, and just be, follow them buy their books, attend their programs. Uh, you know, learn how they did it and, and, yeah. and just really stay the course. And so you'll, you'll have your starting point, you'll have your destination, you'll have your plan, and then you'll have that mentor slash uh, advisor to help you get there. Right. That's great advice. I love yeah. it. I love it. Now, what kind of services that you, you, I know you do a bunch of things, like what type of services do you do that could help people that are interested in what you had to say today? Uh, so my biggest one is finances finances first. And so, you know, we do, uh, uh, projection models again. Mm -hmm. So I, I used to, um, I used to do this for big companies and I learned so much. And so if, if you can understand the math of the business, mm -hmm. it's, it's on the spreadsheet. Right. And so we help people put the math, put the math together. And then we help them do their bookkeeping, tax consulting, financial, yeah. think of it as a, a fractional CFO component. Mm -hmm. That is, that's what I primarily focus on. Yeah. And then once we have that done is what we can do is we can help you with your operations. We can help you with your sales and we can help you with your marketing. Yeah. But if I don't have somebody with strong finances, I don't want to get in the hornet's nest of their business Yeah. because it, it won't work. And then they'll blame me for it. <laughs> and, you know, I've, I've gone down that road. And so we, we really focus on getting stout finances and then we can help with the operationals at component of it, uh, you know, fractional CEO type stuff. We can help them document everything, create yeah. SOPs, bring in that infrastructure yeah. uh, around the operation sales and the marketing. And so that's, we really, we really, I'm a big advocate of doing it all, right? but it has to be with the right people yes. because if the people aren't, if they don't have the right mindset, they don't have the right offer. If they don't, if, if, if I can't see the end zone, I won't yeah. take them on as a client. Because, you know, I've, I've had, a have paid a lot of coaches, consultants and education people that just sold me something. And, you know, I don't want to be that person. I, if I don't see the end zone, if I don't see a, a possibility, I won't take you on as a client. Right. And there's a lot of people I don't be just because they're not ready for a guy like me. Right. Or, you know, and it's, or, 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 you know, even if they have the money, they're not ready emotionally. They're not ready. Maybe they don't have the right team in place. Maybe they don't have the right offer in place. 
Uh, and I just, I don't want to just sit there and take their money. And so we really look at all of those components. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, finance first. I love it. I love it. And you do group coaching. You said also you do have, you have group sessions with large groups and you yeah. teach and, and you have different types of uh, um, topics that you go over and, and you teach people about different varies of about finance and stuff like that. Can you tell us a little about that? Yeah. And so, you know, that whole component of finance operation, marketing and sales, and then uh, we even go further taxes and reinvestment of that money. So I'm, I'm an advocate of make your money in your business, reinvest that money into ta uh, real estate, rental real estate for tax strategies for uh, wealth building. And so I, I personally am on a call every day, Monday through Friday, I've been doing this for eight years. And what I've learned is, you know, most of us think we need one-on-one -on -one coaching. That's sort right. of this misconception. I think a lot of people have the challenge with one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's very expensive. Uh, specifically, for, you know, for uh, a guy like me. And so most people, uh, the, they don't really need one-on-one -on -one coaching, in my opinion. Yeah. And so group coaching, I call it masterminds, is way more effective, in my opinion. Yeah. Because like today, I had 40 people on the call. And we're talking, about, so I have 40 different other perspectives. I have 40 different other people that have money, right? Because yeah. we buy businesses, we buy real estate. And they're like, oh, I love that deal. I'll partner with you. So you're creating that ecosystem that most people need because when I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, it typically leads to an outcome that says, go do this. Mm -hmm. And then they have to go find that person. Or, 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 And so when you're in a group mastermind, you're like, oh, somebody knows somebody. Yeah. Right. And so you're leveraging everyone in that conversation. And then everyone else is learning from that experience too. And right. they're getting questions answered that they didn't even know they had. Yeah. Right? And so when you're starting this off, you know, I've been in groups where it's 50 people and nobody has a question. And the reason nobody has a question is they don't even know what questions ask Yeah, because that's why they're there. They hired me to shine the light on the area that they don't know. Yeah. And so we have everyone in that, in that mastermind, you know, starting from brand new all the way up to very, very successful. And so the new people get to be with the successful people and get to sort of see what that landscape looks like. Yeah. And then the, the uh, successful people, they get to mentor the new people because successful people love helping people. Yeah. They just don't have the bandwidth for it or the, the infrastructure for it. And so yeah. I've created that infrastructure called mastermind where they, they get to hop on and say, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm doing. Or, Hey, they get to consult right on that call. And when the right. call's done, they leave, they go back to their business. They don't have to do all that infrastructure and the support component. Yeah. So I've just really created that environment. That's amazing. I love that. You know, I personally have met so many productive people through a mastermind class and I've actually right. collaborated with people and actually have profited off, you know, other people and their ideas and just, you know, and collaborating with them. And I think mastermind classes are amazing. You know, you meet yeah. people from all walks of life in all different levels. And, and a lot of times too, people who have really elevated to the top, they are more than happy to help somebody that is on a lower level level because they want to see you succeed because they've been there and they know what it feels like. So those classes are amazing. I, I personally love mastermind classes. Yeah. There, you know, if, uh, if you're just take the time out to, to go educate yourself and, and put in the work, yeah, successful people see that and they want, they want to be your mentor. They want to, you know, I, I, I get it right. I get people helping me and yeah. I love helping people. But what I don't enjoy is having to drag people through the mud, right? Yeah. When, oh, this is hard. I can't do this. Like that is not something that successful people want to be around. Cause guess what? We all had to go through it. There's no shortcut. Exactly. People, if there were, if there was a loophole, a shortcut, it would call the way. Yeah. Right? We call it the way. <laughs> so you just got to go out and do the work. And yeah. For people that are willing to put in the work. I love it. I mean, I, I have a Friday night mastermind, but you know, it's, it's a very high end mastermind. You have to. Um, you have to be approved to be in it because it's my Friday night. Yeah. And what we're doing, we're buying businesses and, and hotels in there. And so if you're not, if you can't operate at that level and actually go do the work, well, it's, it's no fun, but it's so fun because the people in there are actually doing the work. Right. I love yeah. that. I love yeah. that. Uh, can people find all this on your website? Yeah. So the best place to find me, cause I do so much is, uh, my, my blog, Indiana uh, dot com. And so, uh, Indiana, like the state Ullman is my last name, O E H L M A N, uh, dot com. And, you know, I have, uh, we do 
just a right variety of different things. My wife and I just called it, started a couples coaching session and 10, we just did, got done with our 10 series session. Uh, and the reason we did that is we wanted to work on our marriage. And so yeah. we said, Hey, let's, 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 we got to work on us before we can train others. And exactly. so that's exactly what we did. And so we do a bunch of variety of different stuff. And so that's the, probably the best base, uh, place to reach out to me. I love it. I love it. This has been great. I, I thank you so much for coming back on the show. I'm so glad you're doing the podcast series with us. I can't wait to have you back on so we could tackle a new topic. And this has been amazing. You know, I really get inspiration from you because you, you know, you've come such a long way and, you know, you have really accomplished what most people dream of accomplishing. And I think it also gives people inspiration and hope because when you see one person do it, or you see more than one person do it, you realize, Hey, I have what it takes. And for those people who might doubt themselves, you know, don't doubt yourself, you know, because you have the ability. And, and before we go, what do you say to those people who are doubtful and, and they're kind of like, you know, I don't know if I could ever reach that point, you know, what's your last words of advice for those type of people? Um, I used to, you know, it's, it's, um, change the questions you ask yourself. Because if you're asking yourself, why can't I, you're going to get an answer. And whatever answer it is, it's just going to justify the question. Yeah. Right. Yep. And so start changing the question. I just wrote an article on this. Change the questions you ask yourself. Uh, why am I not good enough? Is not a good question. Why right. can't I? Like, those are not good questions. No. Why am I stupid? Why am I? Why? Why? why you know, disempowering conversation. Transform the questions into how can I? Who could yeah. I talk to? what could I do today? Right. Who could I, you know, just empowering questions that actually move the conversation forward. Yeah. If, if, if you can get rid of all those garbage questions, you'll like, you'll change your life. Yeah. Excellent answer. I love it. I love it. Zach, this has been amazing. I can't wait to come back on the show and we have our next conversation. I love having you on and thank you so much for sharing all this knowledge and wisdom and that you've been great. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Stacey. Oh, you're very welcome. You have a great day. You too.